Yo, what is up guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24 7 Mall channel, your source for on point and no hype reviews. We are back yet again, everybody. We're back with another fragrance review right here, guys. And today we are going to talk about another recent release from the house of Roja Parfums. Roja being one of my favorite niche houses out there. This is the second release. The first one I already reviewed, that's Isola Blue. And that was uh, put up a couple of days ago. If you guys wanna watch that for spring, summer perfumes, that's definitely one of them. But today we are going to talk about a fragrance that is a Middle Eastern oud-based fragrance, guys. And although I do have mainstream uh, viewers in this channel, I also do know that we have a lot of oud lovers, a lot of Middle Eastern perfumes, lovers that watch these videos and so today this is a treat for y'all because that's basically what this is now before I continue please do not forget to like and subscribe guys liking subscribing and watching the ads is a great big deal to the channel we're down to maybe 350 350 left before we hit 16,000 subscribers and nearly 3 million views guys so please continue to support the channel guys thank you very much and the fragrance that we will be talking about today is none other than Roja Parfums Taif Aoud Parfum, yes, Taif Aoud Parfum, guys. And Taif basically means rose in Arabic, and Aoud basically means oud, okay? So it's basically rose oud, guys. Now, the EDP version of this was actually released a few years ago. And I remember during that time, I mean, we were all about Roja. I mean, Roja almost had a monopoly when it came to upscale niche types of fragrances, guys. And the original Taif Aoud EDP was a Fortnum and Mason exclusive, which meant you'd have to fly over there, you have to live over there in London, go into the department store, and that's the only time you'll be able to try or test or purchase this exclusive fragrance. But as of today, Roja Parfums re release this fragrance as a general release so now everyone and their mama can actually purchase this fragrance try this fragrance you don't have to go to London to do that now the thing about this fragrance much like Isola Blue was basically a rerun of Oligarch was that really there are no changes on the notes basically this is just in parfum concentration so this is basically still the same formula as the Fortnum and Mason exclusive that released years ago and so now that this is re-released one of the questions I've always had was that how does this stand up to the current market to the current competition of rose oud fragrances of middle eastern rose fragrances guys and right now they are a plenty at this point i have tried and reviewed multiple rose oud fragrances not only from the niche uh types of companies but also from the mainstream so there's a lot of competition now i will discuss this fragrance i'll break this down to you guys i'll talk about what's different what's the same and does this stand up to the current level of competition. Let's go spray this thing right now. Woo! Okay guys, now let's talk about Roja Parfums, Taif Aoud Parfum, shall we? So this fragrance, just by the name, it's a no-brainer. Taif means rose and then Aoud means oud. This is expected to be a rose oud fragrance on paper. However, if you have tried a lot of these types of fragrances, you'll know that there are some stark differences that these rose ouds have between each other, as well as the type of rose that you will get once you spray this fragrance. And in this fragrance right here, I will say this, that there is an immediate rose component that starts off this fragrance. Although if you look at the note breakdown, it seems like it's right there in the mid or it's right there near the end. No, you are going to get a rose component right here from the get-go on immediate spray of this fragrance right here. And this rose component is comprised of geranium, clove as well as the rose itself okay so it's geranium clove and the rose itself this exact component is a warm spicy deep dark rosy component that starts off this fragrance guys okay so it's on immediate spray this rose component here in taif Aoud, let me describe it it's actually not as bloomy or sweet as other rose fragrances. Matter of fact, it's deep, dark, it's somewhat smoky, and then you have the clove to add that spiciness. You've got geranium to add some green to it, but definitely it is a deep, dark rose, kind of like a smoky rose as well. And this dominates the fragrance, really, for almost its entirety. The rose right here is super duper opulent in nature. 
okay? Super duper is for the super wealthy. And I could really smell that compared to other rose oud fragrances that I've tried in the past. And I mean, this is basically Roja's bread and butter. This is what he does the best. He does source these notes and ingredients to give you a really next level opulent feel. It's misunderstood by many, but it is not meant to be understood by the common person anyways. And it is a deep, dark, opulent rose right here. And my first impression was that, you know, this one, it feels like the perfect fit for a very wealthy Middle Eastern woman. And I thought about Abu Dhabi, I've been there a few times and I've been to like the Galleria in Abu Dhabi and I've seen these, it seemed like conservative looking like wealthy Middle Eastern women uh, shopping over there. They got their black shawls over, you know, it seems like it's very conservative. However, when you look closely into like the shoes, the watch or like the shades or like these little accessories that they have, you'll realize, oh my gosh, these women are pretty upscale and they try to show it, but in a very conservative way, guys. And I've seen a lot of these women in the Middle East. Oh my God, one time I was uh, actually parked at the back of the Galleria Mall or was it the Yaz Mall, not sure. But I've actually seen these types of women roll out with a baggage handler's cart. Okay, and I'm talking about the big one that can actually haul like 10 luggages but instead of luggages, they're like Louis Vuitton bags, okay? So I've seen that like roll out from the back and I was just like, oh my God, this is just next level wealthy right here. And I would say that this rose here, this deep, dark, mysterious rose would just, it's, it's befitting you know, of that type of woman, that type of really wealthy Middle Eastern woman, I feel like this is perfect for that person right there. Now, as I tried this fragrance a couple times more, I realized that this could also be a men's perfume, okay? Because it also has that warm and spicy nature in the beginning that is actually heavily on the dark rose and the spices in the beginning. This is for someone, guy or gal, that looks at perfume as something of a mystical journey something that has a beautiful journey, a beautiful characterization and romanticism. This would be for you if you like these types of perfumes. I would say that the rose component will definitely get you. Now you're probably wondering, Troy, what's up with the top notes? Where did they go if this rose component is really that strong? So on the top notes, you actually have bergamot, you have aldehydes, and you have even cassis, which is basically the leaves of the black Quran tree. So these are meant to be put together actually. And I would say that these notes are the balancers to this fragrance. And matter of fact, what they do specifically in the beginning of this fragrance is try to pull back this warm spicy rose component into fresher territory. These are mood enhancers for the user. So as you are smelling this deep, dark, opulent rose, really in the beginning you get hints of fruit, you get hints of citrus and freshness with some black currant, and then you also have the aldehydes, which is, you know, this is a stamp of rosier right here. He loves putting aldehydes uh, into all his fragrances, but they're meant to be uplifting aldehydes to balance this fragrance. Now the balance to me is an 80-20, FYI. 80-20, only 20% of this fragrance would be uplifting, citrusy and fruity in the beginning, but mostly you will feel that deep, dark, warm, spicy, smoky rose component, 80%. It's a big part of this fragrance. Now, after an hour of that 80-20 combination of that warm, spicy, deep, dark rose component with those balancers of citruses and aldehydes to keep that mood going, guys, this is when you are going to get a full-bodied rose, okay? So the full-bodied rose comes out in the mid after one hour, which is pretty consistent with most opening stages of perfumes. You get an hour of that opening stage and then the full bodied, full bloom rose comes out after an hour. Now this rose, again, very, very opulent smelling, deep, dark, not even really sweet, maybe even smoky. And again, this will appeal to the mysteriousness, the mystique of the person. So if you are a woman of mystery or if you are a man of mystery and you are looking for that upscale, really 
next world uh, wealthy type of scent, this full-bodied rose will really accompany that. Now this full-bodied rose is accompanied by some florals right here. You're gonna get some jasmine as well as ilang ilang. And ilang ilang to me is a yellow floral note that's always like to me, I think about opulence. I think about upscale, rich, wealthy, almost all roja perfumes that are opulent and rich smelling that are for really the top 1% of the world. I mean, they either have all the hides or Ilang Ilang. And Ilang Ilang flanks this beautiful deep dark rose really wonderfully. And you have this floral bloom right here, guys. This is a very strong, let me say this, a very strong component of this fragrance performance wise, guys. This part is so strong, in fact, that in my opinion, it can compete with even the strongest rose oud perfumes out there. We're talking about Dasman by Bodicea. We're talking about The Night by Frederick Mall, which I just reviewed. This can compete with those fragrances when it comes to the strength. So the opening part is a strong sillage part, but then the mid part where it really blooms, in my opinion, is where it goes subnuclear. If you are a big fan of rose or just photorealistic, components to a fragrance, I think that this will be your favorite stage right here. Or if you like rose in Middle Eastern perfumes, this will be your favorite part. And this part is the most long lasting, strongest part of this fragrance right here. So actually it's been rose all along since the beginning, but this full bodied rose flanked by florals is the strongest and longest part of this fragrance. So you gotta love rose and the deepness and darkness of this rose to really appreciate this part right here. Now there is a reason why the rose of Taif Oud Parfum is kind of deep, dark, and smoky, and not really that sweet in general. And that's because of the final transition as this fragrance moves along to the dry down, guys. And that is basically caught by incense. Okay, so it does make sense that the nature of the rose really isn't sweet, it's more like a dark, mysterious perfume, and then incense just takes that mysticism as well, it catches it and continues it all the way to the dry down, guys. So this is, to me, a more rose incense type of fragrance rather than rose oud. And if you're wondering where's the oud, we always ask that when it comes to perfumes. The oud note right here, guys, to me is a sweet, dark, smoky oud wood. That's basically what it is. It is not barnyard or animalic. It's this type of oud wood that basically mixes with the smokiness of incense, the sweetness of amber, the gradient of musk, and patchouli right here on the dry down, guys. And with that being said, that makes this fragrance a little bit more attuned to someone in the mainstream that is probably wanting to expand uh, their collection into Middle Eastern perfumes. If you want to head into that territory, I think that Taif Aoud by Roja Parfums is a great transitional perfume where you get to experience oud, but not necessarily something that will repulse you at all. This will not because again, the oud here is well blended with these dark, smoky, woody, and sweet musky notes here in the dry down. Now this fragrance performance wise, the strongest aspect of this fragrance starts from second one until hour eight. Okay, so you've got eight hours of really, really strong, almost beastly performance, but I would say it's just Middle Eastern competitive. You know, it's like normal over there, but then it could be stronger for a lot of you guys. But this fragrance right here, eight hours of a very, very strong performance. And then after the eighth hour, this fragrance becomes an aura scent, still stronger than a lingering scent, and then eventually becomes a lingering scent past 10 hours. So I would say that the total performance of this fragrance significant scent is around 10 to 11 hours total, with eight hours being a very strong, rosy, smoky, deep, dark component right here, guys. And this is only with like three or four sprays from this little decant right here. So full bottle, I'm really not sure how strong that will be 
if you sprayed that on yourself. Now, with that being said, let's look at the full bottle worthiness of this fragrance. Now, this fragrance right here, in my opinion, is a special perfume. There is a reason why this was a Fortnum and Mason exclusive. There is something about this fragrance that makes it ultra special, special occasion special, unless this is really your lifestyle. If your lifestyle is rich, wealthy, much like those super rich and wealthy Abu Dhabi women that I saw in the Galleria, then this should be a normal grabber for y'all guys. But you don't have to be rich. To do this, this fragrance will give you the special vibes for any special or upscale situation, guys. And of course, if you are the type like I am, that's kind of mysterious and you don't care whether you're understood or misunderstood and you like that kind of mystery, you like that kind of attention, then without a doubt, this is a rose oud fragrance that you should probably add in your collection right here. Try this first, get a decant from Beverly Hills Perfumery, and if you've tried it, and you see what I'm talking about, that this fragrance smells absolutely next level upscale. And if you liked that experience, that emotional experience, that out of body ethereal experience of wearing one of the best top notch rose perfumes in terms of quality and mix, then easily this 100 ml is worth it. I mean, matter of fact, this is a perfume that you can share with your significant other. That's another thing. First of all, both guys and gals can wear it, or you know, you can be two gals and wear it and share this type of fragrance. And also, this is all about status. This is all about wealth. So if you're about that life, like I said, if you are one of those Emirati women, those Arab women in the Middle East with a bunch of money, bunch of credit cards to spend, you know, definitely. I think that this fragrance is custom made for you out there. Now, if you're a guy, like I said, it's beautiful as well. And that is it. That is my no hype review on Roja Parfums, Taif Aoud Parfum. Let me know in the comments below what y'all think. If you have tried this fragrance, does my experience and my recommendations match up with yours? Let me know in the comments below. And I will be back for another video maybe tomorrow. So hang on tight. Again, please do not forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next video. God bless. Take care. Peace.